All right, IMPI brought to you by DigiKey For this week, it is Microchip Lady Data. What is this week's IMPI? I'm glad you asked. You know what's funny is I don't think we've done microchip chips before. We've done some microchip other sensors and products. Um, but this, I think, is the first you know microchip or at least AVR chip that we've covered on IMPI because you know we haven't used AVR chips. I mean, we use them all the time, but um, you know we haven't really talked about new ones as much, but there has been a lot of innovations in uh, the 8-bit AVR microcontroller line from Microchip, and uh, there's a new series that came out, and so I wanted to check it out. It's the DD series, um, the Microchip DD. Now, be, you know, just to be clear, it says AVR 64, it's not 64-bit, that's just the size of the flash, uh, and then DD um, is the, the series, and then 32 is the number of pins in this package, in this case, it's a 32-pin QFN. Uh, so what is this? It's an 8-bit micro. Um, so if you're used to AVR microcontrollers like the Atmega T or AT Tiny or Atmega 328, this will be familiar. Um, they run up to 64 megahertz, and again, it's one instruction uh, per per clock cycle. Uh, you know, some of them aren't, but many of them are, including a hardware multiply, which is a two-cycle hardware multiplier. Uh, it runs at 24 megahertz, uh, 1632-64K of flash. 248K of RAM, you know, the bigger, the more expensive, et cetera. And of course, there's EEPROM, there's also NVRAM, and they come in all sorts of different packages from 14 uh, to 32 pin, including a 28 dip, which is like quite brave of them uh, to come up with a dip chip of a, of a new microcontroller these days. Um, but, you know, if you're used to using, um, you know, RISC chipsets uh, like, you know, RISC V or ARM Cortex, you might be like, well, why, why would I want to go backwards to an AVR 8-bit? Well, one thing is simplicity. I mean, like, there was nothing as easy as, as controlling an AVR. You could really just put in register commands. You didn't have to worry about locking the bus or, like, muxing this or, like, this controller affected that. I mean, it's very simple. Um, it's very straightforward. It's very fast. You know, your interrupts will go off very quickly because there isn't, you know, there's not as much sharing of, of this, this backend resource I found. Um, they're very inexpensive because you're not paying the um, ARM licensing fee. And you know, there's actually a surprising, you know, a lot of people, they only move to maybe a 32 bit processor, not because they need uh, literally the um, amount of, of you know, speed or the number of bits in a, in a multiply or add, but because they need all the peripherals. But um, there's some really cool peripherals. Um, so we'll go over those in a second. So there's a bunch in this family. What I do like is that um, Microchip has kind of like done a very standardized way of like how many pins, how much flash and, and memory. And they made this little grid where it's like you can kind of get any config and anything. You know, obviously you're going to get you're going to get more timers in when you have more pins. And I think there's like two underlying dies. But basically, you pick your number of pins, then you pick the amount of flash, and you're mostly paying for, for flash memory. Um, and the SRAM increases with it as well. So there's, there's a range. Not all of them are in stock right now or released right now. Um, so these are, you know, the families basically you double the flash, you double the RAM, EEPROM stays the same, and the uh, uh, NVM memory stays the same. Okay, so on to the peripherals. So here's some cool things. So one, it's running at 24 megahertz, which is a little faster than the standard, like 16 or eight that I'm used to, but it's got five timers, uh, 16, uh, four 16 bit, sorry. Yeah, four 16 bit timers and a 12 bit timer. There's two UARTs, two hardware UARTs. So you can use one for like debugging and then you can use one for, um, you know, different hardware. You can have two hardware UARTs because you have, it's, like, it's really, if you don't have a UART, they're really, you can't bit bang a UART very easily. Um, there's SPI, there's I squared C. Uh, there is a 12-bit ADC, so usually it's 10-bit, but this one is 12, which is quite nice. Um, that's as, par as good as you're going to get on a Cortex. And it's multiplexed to just about all the pins. I mean, you know, on the 14, a bit, you know, half the GPIO have ADC on them, 23 on the 32 pin, 7 on the 14. Uh, there's a 10-bit DAC, which is cool. Uh, and there's the analog pattern and zero detector. Um, these do not have the peripheral touch controller. Uh, you can kind of fake it with a one mega ohm resistor and they don't have an op amp. They do have two cool things, the CCL LUT and um, the MVIO. And the CCL LUT is, um, 
is interesting. I think I forgot to add a image. Actually, no, yeah, sorry. The next image is the CCL lot. So let's go to the CCL lot. So it's kind of like a micro CPLD. Um, and you can kind of make like a Manchester encoder or you can make an SR lot. You basically get like three or four different modules and each one has like a, a, a logic lookup table. So you can turn it into any kind of gate and then you can take events or interrupts and be like, okay, this interrupt X or that interrupt, I want to generate a third interrupt or something, or I want that to come in, you know, so this GPIO triggers this or triggers that. So it, it's an interesting, like if you would normally have, um, you know, an external piece of logic that just kind of helps you do a little bit of, of glue, um, it's built into um, the chips now. And I think it's, I think it's probably handy when you're just doing like counter timers, motor control, interrupt manipulation where you want, you know, only trigger on this when not this interrupt, et cetera. So instead of doing that in software, which is slow, you can do that instantation, instantaneously in hardware with these uh, logic lookup tables. The other thing that's cool, uh, and I haven't seen that CC a lot I've seen before, <coughs> but the MVIO is, is new and interesting. So um, it's a way of basically having, you know, two voltage domains for your microcontroller. So what you normally have is like, let's say you have a five volt MCU, like these MCUs run up to five volts and you need five volts because you're doing some CAN bus stuff or you're interfacing with hardware that, you know, it needs to be five volts. Um, and you want a three volt sensor, we usually use a logic level shifter, right? Either you use like a, an I squared C shifter, use some FETs and some pull-ups and that works fine. But like now your board's gotten bigger, it's more complicated, the materials has gone up. Um, what this system does, and there's some code that shows what it looks like, is you basically have a separate VDDIO, VDIO2, and it can be higher or lower than the core voltage. In here it's 1.8, but it could be 1.3 to or 1.5 or 5 to 3 or 5 to 2, whatever. And then there's one port for the GPIO that could be I squared C, SPI, UR, or just plain GPIO. And that port can run on the second voltage and it does, it's, it's completely logic safe for that voltage. Um, so for example, instead of losing a logic level shifter, you run your core at 3.3 volts. Some stuff is at three and then you have an LCD, you know, a lot of LCD modules, they want to have five volt logic and power, not a problem. Um, you give it that second five volt power supply and you don't have to worry about logic level shifting. Um, likewise, you can go the other way. You have a five volt core, you want to connect to a three volt sensor, not a problem, you use the MVIO, you set that port up to be 3.3 volt and then you talk to the sensor um, at that logic level. So pretty neat. Um, and there's a, uh, I kind of just love this diagram. This is like no logic level shifter, you do it all in. So check out uh, TB3287. That's the app note on how to get started with this. You know, it doesn't generate the voltage on its own. You do have to supply the voltage um, so you do need to have the power supply but you probably need that anyways to power the sensor um, so you have enough current for the sensor and here's the best part all this is in stock no yes way. you can actually buy it and it's pretty affordable yeah. um, so these chips uh, oh excuse me go back sorry yeah. these chips are unit one they're about a dollar 25 to a dollar 60 um, in quantity 100 which is kind of the standard pre-manufacturing quantity for microchip, um, they get down to a dollar. Uh, so these are, you know, a lot more memory, a lot more, a lot more timers, um, especially if you're always hungry for timers and, and there, there's never enough. Um, these are a great upgrade from, you know, your at megas, your maybe some X megas even, um, AT tinies, uh, swap them in with this and you'll be happy. You can also get a dev board. I'll show it off really quickly if people want to see it, but it's basically a Curiosity Nano. Um, I like these dev boards because they're breadboard friendly and they've got the little debugging interface as well. And the debugging interface usually has serial as well. Um, but these are, uh, these are nice. It uses, um, UPDI by the way, for programming and debugging. Um, this is a great way to get all the GPIO. It's castellated, but you can also, um, breadboard it up. And there's a tutorial on using this with the, um, you can see VDIO2 here. So you can use that if you want to test out the MVIO preferable we just chatted about. Um, and finally, uh, there is support in MP Lab, of course, which is um, the microchip slash AVR IDE. But if you want to use Arduino, 
Um, Spence Conde, who has some really mm. great uh, AVR and Mega Teeny cores, uh, has either added or is in the process right now of adding uh, DD series, as he says. They've done the DD, the DD parts are shipping. So um, they picked up a couple of different chips and they're adding support. Uh, so you'll see that if you want to use Arduino core, that could be um, interesting mix to mix you know, Arduino with this kind of new peripheral chip. Available on DigiKey, it's really in stock, 537 at the time of this printing. By printing, I mean screechoning. And uh, here's a little short video. The AVR DD family is Microchip's latest addition to our portfolio of 8-bit AVR microcontrollers. Whether you're designing a household appliance, a robust controller board for a factory application, or an extremely low-power IoT sensor node connected to a device on the other side of the planet, the AVR DD product family makes it easy to prototype and get your product to market faster. The family features high-performance devices with large memories that are available in low pin count packages. They offer extremely low power consumption to increase battery life in portable applications. These MCUs are also excellent options for safety-critical and secure applications that require small form factor solutions. They offer noteworthy analog and real-time control capabilities, including a 12-bit differential ADC in a small 14-pin package. Other key features include a user-configurable event system, configurable custom logic, and many other core independent peripherals, so you can easily customize your design. This microcontroller family is available in 14, 20, 28, and 32 pins in SOIC, SPDIP, VQFN, and TQFP packages, with 16, 32, and 64 kilobytes of flash memory available in each of these packages. Hi, I'm MPI.